Good evening and welcome to Next on the Tee with Chris Mascaro, where PGA and LPGA players, legends, and top instructors go to share their insights and playing lessons. Join Chris every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time as he talks with the greats of the game. Tonight's show is sponsored by the French Lick Resort, Ben Hogan Golf, the PGA Tour Superstore, the Salt Creek Golf Retreat, Taylor Made Golf, the Bobby Jones Apparel Company, and Super Speed Golf. Now here's your host, Chris Mascaro. Good evening, folks, and welcome to Next on the Tee. I am your host, Chris Mascaro, and, and I want to start out tonight by wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Be safe out there if you're traveling around this week. And, you know, this time of year is, you know, when we really get an opportunity to sit back and set some time aside to express our thanks, you know, for the many blessings that we all have in our lives. And and I know we here on Next on the T have certainly a lot to be thankful for. On a personal note, I've got a great family, great parents, a wonderful wife, and and three beautiful children that I am very thankful for. Also very thankful for our sponsors, which you heard right there at the top of the show. Very thankful for their support and highlighted tonight by one of my guests, who's going to be David Abeley, the CEO of TaylorMade Golf tonight. Very thankful for their support. And you guys hear me talking about my import driver every week here on the show. It gives the accuracy that we are all looking for off the tee on top of some wonderful distance gains as well. So very thankful to them and uh, and for David for uh, joining me back on the show again this week and and so many of our guests and uh, you know we have been certainly blessed to have a wonderful array of guests over the years that we have been doing the show and the and the biggest blessing of all is is uh, most of them have really become great friends both on and off the air so very thankful for them for uh, their wonderful support and so many of them for continuing to come back on the show three four five six ten times so thankful for our wonderful guests and, and most of all thankful to all of you for tuning in every week and to our our veterans and our military personnel who are listening in around the world on the armed forces radio network we are also thankful for the things that for our veterans for what you've done for us in the past and and uh, for our active military personnel for what you continue to do every day as we say all the time without you there is no us so Thanks to all of the folks listening in around the world and to folks listening in on great sites like Podbean and iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Audioboom, SoundCloud, iTunes, wherever you're consuming your podcast, we are out there everywhere. And we thank you all of you for tuning in each and every week to be a part of the show as well. Tonight, we've got another great show in store for you. My first guest, like I mentioned a moment ago, is going to be David Abelis, who is the CEO of TaylorMade Golf. David has become a wonderful friend of the show over the last few years. Tonight's going to mark his fourth visit with me here on the show. I'm going to talk to David tonight about, you know, A, what do they have coming up for this holiday season, right? As we look ahead to later this week, we've got Black Friday on the horizon right after Thanksgiving. We've got Cyber Monday on the back end of that. So we'll talk about uh, all the wonderful things that they've got coming up for us. Also for the golfer in our lives, right? And what, when we look ahead to the holiday season, what, what are going to be some of the great gifts that they're going to have out there for us, uh, you know, this holiday season? Plus, uh, I also want to get David's thoughts. They, they've made a decision not to be a part of the PGA Merchandise Show in 2019. So interested to hear what, uh, what they have in store outside of being a part of that show in uh, in January. So looking forward to having David with me in just a few minutes. Following him, I'm going to get a visit from uh, PGA professional Kevin Roman. Kevin was a director of instruction here in Atlanta at Cherokee Town and Country Club for many years, was the Georgia PGA Teacher of the Year back in 2014. He has since moved out to Pebble Beach, California. He's now the director of instruction at Monterey Peninsula Country Club. So we will certainly certainly talk about that. Plus, Kevin played in a couple of majors, the 1993 U.S. Open at Baltus Roll and the 2009 PGA Championship at Hazeltine. So I want to talk about his memories from being a part of those great events. So look forward to having Kevin on the show with me a little bit later on in this half hour. So, folks, a lot more great stories and information coming your way tonight on this edition of Next on the Tee. Again, thank you so much for tuning in and taking the journey with me over the next hour. Before we get started, I always like to remind you about our good friend Mitchell Lawrence and his great golf show that marries golf and travel. It is called Talking Golf Getaways, which you can find online at golfnewsnet.com or over on Audio Boomer, really anywhere you consume podcasts. 
and his co-host Darren Bunch travel all over the world, and they let you know about great places to play, stay, and even eat while you're there. Again, it's called Talking Golf Getaways, and you can stream it online at golfnewsnet.com or over on Audio Boom. His twin brother, Matthew, and his show, Backspin Golf, which is on hiatus for a couple of months, which you guys all know, I'm not happy about at all. Matthew has sort of ruined my Sunday mornings now, but uh, his show, which uh, airs on ESPN Radio AM 1300 up in Lexington, Kentucky, and I encourage all of you to still go online to WLXG.com and check out his archive shows as a podcast because the show really is fantastic folks again it's called backspin up and you can stream this season's shows online as a podcast by going online to wlxg.com or by downloading the wlxg app and folks as you guys all know we are sponsored by the french lick resort let's hear a word from our good friend steve rondonero about what they've got going on up there Play legendary golf at French Lick Resort, the only place in the country where you can play courses by two Hall of Fame designers on the same property. Our Pete Dye and Donald Ross courses offer two very different challenges. Experience them both and save with our Hall of Fame package. Our two historic hotels are unique as well. Cap it off with a fun visit to the French Lick Casino. Check us out online at FrenchLick.com. Bring a group and save even more. Play legendary golf this season at French Lick Resort. Yeah, folks, go online to FrenchLick.com to see for yourself what a wonderful place they have up there and to book your stay as well. And, folks, I want to continue to remind you about my M4 driver from TaylorMade Golf. If you haven't tried their twist face technology, folks, you're missing out. I don't know about you, but I don't hit it in the center of the face every single time. And after studying hundreds of thousands of swings from pros and amateurs like us, TaylorMade designed their new drivers to protect us from our miss hits and give us straighter distance. So whether your miss is on the low heel or the high toe, Twist Face brings that ball back to center, keeping the distance we want, but finding the fairway more often. And I'm hitting more fairways than I ever have. Their new drivers are also the choice of pretty good golfers you might recognize. Twist Face is played by Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy, Dustin Johnson, Jason Day, John Rahman, world number one, Justin Rose, to name just a few. And they're dominating the top 10 out on tour. So if you haven't tried Twist Face, go hit it and get fit. It's in the new M3 and M4 drivers and only from TaylorMade. Please also check out our friends at the Bobby Jones and Barrel Company by going online to bobbyjones.com. Their new fall collection is out and now is the perfect opportunity to change things up layer upon layer. They make style easy, find carefully coordinated outfits in a variety of colors and options. The Bobby Jones brand delivers excellence as genuine as the legend himself with their collection of golf performance and lifestyle apparel for both men and women. See it online by going to bobbyjones.com. All right, now back in making his fourth appearance with me here on the French Lick Resort guest line is David Abel. He is, again, president and CEO of TaylorMade Golf. Let me remind you a little bit more about David's background. Earned his degree in marketing and finance from the University of Connecticut. Joined TaylorMade as their general manager for their Asia-Pacific division. He later moved over to the director of sales for North America. Left TaylorMade for a little while for Titleist and the Akushnik Company to become their vice president of sales and marketing. Came back to TaylorMade as their executive vice president and general manager and took over as CEO and president back in February of 2015. And I am thrilled that he is back with me again tonight here on Next on the T. Hey, David, thanks for coming back on the show. Chris, great to be back on the show, and thanks for the warm welcome and uh, the wonderful Thanksgiving wishes. We uh, we feel the same way and like to, even before we start, thank all of our uh, servicemen and women for their incredible uh, dedication to our country. So thanks so much for the uh, the warm intro and the welcome back to the show. I appreciate you, David. So, you know, here we are. It's it's Thanksgiving week, and so, David, first and foremost, it's, you know, a time for all of us to give thanks, and from all of us here on the show, we want to thank you and everyone at TaylorMade for being great partners again with us this year. Really appreciate you as a, as a great guest that you have been. Like I say, this is the fourth time we have the opportunity to have you on the show, but wanted to thank you and the brand for all of your support this year. Anytime. Hard to believe it's four times already, Chris. And every time you give a plug for M3 and M4 that I listen to your show, you inspire me to go out and buy one. So thanks so much. <laughs> That's great. So, David, you know, among the other things, you know, that uh, this week means, you know, for a lot of us, it's great food. And again, being thankful and be getting together with family. But we've got Black Friday at the end of the week. We've got, you know, Cyber Monday, you know, sales and opportunities coming on the back end, you know, of the, of the weekend next week. So, Getting, I uh, wanted to get your thoughts. What does TaylorMade have in store for all of us uh, on those two days? 
Yeah, and uh, and Chris, don't forget the big match on Friday. Big, there's a big match, a pay-per-view match between Tiger and Phil on Friday, which would be terrific for golf. But yeah, we're yeah, you know, Thanksgiving is always a kind of a marker in our business as we kind of get closer toward the end of the year and get to the uh, the holiday season. Um, but you know, we've had such an incredible year with Twist Face Technology and Five Piece Construction and TP5 and 5X, as well as. Uh, our P790 iron product that you and I had caught up just briefly before the show, and I indicated that it's very rare that everything works in somebody's business in a given year. And uh, between our tour players, uh, the performance of our products, uh, and certainly how we've performed at retail, we've had just an incredible year. So as we move into the holidays, uh, you can expect to see some wonderful promotions around the new TP5 and TP5X golf ball. So that's a golf ball that's played by five of the top ten players in the world. Many of the athletes that you had uh, had mentioned on the lead into the show, uh, M3 and M4 are the top selling drivers on a global basis right now. So uh, they are at retail and ready for golfers to test and try and and find straight distance in their games and and certainly uh, the continuation and strength of our irons business with P790. So you know you tumble it all together. Those are just some of the few products that you'll find at retail this holiday season. Uh, that I think golfers will not only enjoy, but probably find some pretty good promotional activity around that you can get in and really experience what great performance looks like from TaylorMade. And David, as you mentioned, what an incredible year you guys have had. Yeah, Justin Rose uses an M3, and now he's become the world number one. He and Dustin Johnson, also a TaylorMade guy, sort of been battling back and forth for that top spot all year. You got Francesco Molinari who had you know a career year for him. He's got the M4 driver, his best season ever capped by winning the European Tours race to Dubai and obviously, you know, the, the Open Championship earlier this year. Plus, you've got Tiger and Rory and John Rahm, Jason Day, Brooks Kepka with his two majors also playing a tailor-made driver. Boy, I just don't know that, you know, you could have scripted this any better. Yeah, hey Chris, if we fast forward every year to uh, to the end of November, just before Thanksgiving, and you and I can say that our athletes performed at that level every year, I would be completely satisfied. It's been a, a just, I mean, a tremendous year on the PGA Tour. The resurgence of Tiger, um, how he's gotten his game back. He's found a wonderful golf swing. I believe our technology, and he has actually suggested this because he doesn't swing it the same way that he used to, and. Um, while he still has incredible speed, he doesn't have the same speed he used to, he is now using technology, and specifically our technology, to help him play better. And you saw that uh, not only as he worked into a new driver, I uh, plays the M3 driver, you saw that as he worked into a new Forge TaylorMade product that we call um, Phase 1. So the, the, the actual production product will be out in the market next spring and into our mill grind wedges. Uh, Tiger uh, has had a, you know, incredible impact not only on golf over time, but certainly in 2018. And it would, but it was great to see. I'm actually starting to make some plans for the beginning of the year. I head to Kapalu each year to engage with our athletes and, and their representation. And it's just incredible to think that Tiger will will be there if he chooses to play because he won. So as you know, this is the tournament of champions. You've got to win to be able to play in Hawaii, uh, in Maui. But uh, Justin will be there, and DJ will be there, and Rory will be there, and John will be there, uh, and Jason will be there. I mean, every one of our real big guns uh, will have won this year. And so it's really, really nice to see them perform. And But more importantly, when we track them statistically and why they're performing so well, it really started off the tee with each one of them. And we made a claim when we launched Twist Face Technology and M3 and M4 that while distance absolutely matters and we have an obligation to golfers at every skill level to build drivers that go faster and further, we found a technology through years and years of research that actually enabled us to twist the face, the, actually the face insert on the driver so that, you know, most of the misses that amateurs and even professionals alike experience in high toe and low heel, that now you can hit them straighter. So this concept of straight distance has really led to uh, this amazing run of driver success and, and, and performance on the PGA Tour, but more importantly at the amateur level. And so when we look at the data points about driving statistics, not only have every one of those big six players that I just referenced hit it further, their accuracy has improved by anywhere between 6 and 12 percentage points. That is significant. So just think about it as a golfer hitting one or two more fairways around and playing from the fairway as opposed to playing from the rough without compromising any distance. So we have uh, completely revolutionized driver technology again, and you're going to see more and better from us as we move into 2019. 
And David, to that point, I think, you know, one of the great things, as you mentioned, is the, uh, the opportunity to hit more fairways. Is that the, the frontier that's left to, to conquer? Because I, I can't imagine that the moment of inertia can get much better than where we're seeing, you know, the, the, the drivers at now. I, it seems like accuracy yeah. is now the thing. Well, it's certainly one of the variables, Chris, but, you know, we've got a group of engineers that are the best in the business, and it's kind of led us to this position, which we're very humbled by but proud of, that, you know, the innovations that we bring to market are the innovations that typically most brands uh, follow. And whether it was movable weight technology back in the mid-2000s or adjustability in terms of what we call flight control, where you can actually take metal wood loft and lie and, and adjust it uh, before or after you play, uh, or through a fitting, uh, or whether it's in carbon composite, which was M1 in 2015 and now into twist face. Every one of those technologies started at TaylorMade, Chris, and ultimately evolved into most of our competitors' product line. And, you know, that's the most rewarding thing, which is, you know, we're leading on the technology front to help golfers play better. And, and make no mistake, that's why we exist, to help golfers play the game better and enjoy it more. But when you think about What's on the forefront in terms of advanced driver performance? No doubt we can continue to help reduce what we call dispersion, which is right and left tendencies uh, off the driver face, which is what really twist face does for us. It helps off center hits go straighter. So that's one variable. But we also have a series of technologies that we're working on that over time we'll be able to produce that'll help increase speed, which ultimately equates to ball speed and distance. So swing speed to ball speed. Uh, as well as inertia properties and additional forgiveness. So by no means are we anywhere near what we think would be optimal performance, um, but we're so far out on technology. A lot of the technologies we work on, we just simply can't manufacture them yet because the manufacturing base isn't sophisticated enough to make them. So we have got a long way to go before we really get to a place uh, where drivers have maxed out in terms of forgiveness, in terms of uh, distance or in terms of accuracy. So it is only one of many variables that we look at. And, you know, one of the things we've learned and we continue to see with amateur golfers is that when we have the opportunity through custom fitting to really optimize the player's launch, their speed and their spin, in almost every case, we're finding 10 to 15 yards and tighter dispersion. So it's an exciting time. Technology is advancing faster. We're leading the way. And as a net result, you know, we're selling a lot of drivers and making golfers happy. So, David, to that end, technologies that uh, that might be in the not-too-distant future. I know you can't give away a lot of things, but can you give us a hint or uh, point us in a direction to where you think the next innovation is coming from? Yeah, well, I mean, I think the simple default answer to that would be was just hang tight until we get to 2019. And when you and I get a chance to reconnect, uh, the the storyline come January and February 2019 is going to be a new technology from TaylorMade that will quite candidly revolutionize golf forever. And um, it's one thing to talk about revolutionary technologies and innovation. It's another thing to do it. And the thing I'm most proud of is our company does it year in and year out. But 2019 is going to be very special. And what I can tell you is you're going to now find a driver that really – is up against the legal limit in terms of speed, but not just one driver, every single driver we make. It is going to be extremely exciting, and I'm going to leave you at that in the first quarter. All right. David, you, you gave a hint a, a moment ago. We talked about irons, your, your P790. So you got the P760 series and the P790 series. And talk about the what, what those irons are and how they differ from the M3 and M4. Yeah, so they're actually very different. Start with the construction. So P, anything with a P on it from TaylorMade, a P-series iron, is a forged product. So many golfers really love the forged feel. It's a bit softer than a 17-4 cast product. Um, the finishes are a bit different. Uh, the technology is a bit different. P790 is a hollow construction forged speed foam-filled iron. So for the first time, certainly in our history, we're taking a forged technology and building speed and distance into it and playability, which is really a lot of golfers that would love to look at more of a, a thinner top line or a traditional shape. Haven't, you know, the compromise you make with that is that you don't get forgiveness and distance. And that's what you get in M3 and M4. So those are cast cavity back irons. They're built around distance. They're built around forgiveness. They're built around playability. 
But the forged products in P760 and 790 now incorporate speed and forgiveness with that great forged feel with traditional shaping. So they're very, very different in terms of how they look and certainly how they perform. The difference between P790 and 760 is the 790 nomenclature is literally the blade length. It's, seven, it's 79 millimeters from the hosel to the toe. The 760 is 76 millimeters from the hosel to the toe. So one way to think about it is the 760 iron is a compact, smaller version of 790 for a bit better player, lower handicapper. And the 790 is really built for everybody that wants a forged product, that wants to hit it high, that wants to hit it far with optimum forgiveness with great forged feel. And David, you mentioned it's got speed, speed foam technology. Talk about what that is. Yeah, so... If you look on the side of the iron, there's an injection port. There's a little screw there. It's not a weight. It's a screw that we inject speed foam into the product, which enables us to essentially optimize face dynamics and sound. So when the ball hits the club face, the speed foam actually reacts and enables the, the COR of the golf club to go up and propel the golf ball to higher speeds. So not only does it help the, the face dynamic work faster in its interaction with the ball, but importantly, it enables the feel, it reduces vibration to feel incredibly solid. So it's an incredible technology. Um, it's visible uh, externally in terms of the injection port where the speed foam goes in. So if you're looking for the iron, just look at that little injection port on the toe and know that there's speed foam inside that iron. And also, you've got, you guys introduced a, a different set called the GAPR set a few months ago, which to me looks like a wonderful set that allows, and again, it's just, you know, from my perspective, it looks like a set that's going to get the ball airborne a little easier. And it's also com comes in three different variations for, you know, a higher trajectory and a lower trajectory iron set. But talk about what those are. Yeah, that's right. And, um, you know, this has been a really exciting product. So GAPR actually stands for Gapper. And so, Chris, if I were to ask you or any of your listeners, golfers, you know, what's the, what's the longest iron that you're most comfortable hitting and what's your highest lofted fairway width? So let me ask you the question, Chris. What's the longest iron that you're comfortable hitting with consistency? Probably my five or six iron. Okay, your five or six iron. And what's the highest lofted fairway wood that you have in your bag? Uh, I've got a, a hybrid that's uh, 21. Okay. So if you look at the gap that you have between your highest lofted fairway wood and a five or six iron, if we actually to put you, if you had standard ball speeds like most players do, you're going to have somewhere between 40 and 60 yards of gap between that. What we mm -hmm. said was, you know what, for many years, we led the technology revolution by bringing rescue clubs in. Those are hybrid golf clubs. The first hybrid ever made was from TaylorMade. We called it a rescue. But there's really been no evolution in technology and rescue clubs from us or anybody else. We match them up with M3s and M4s. They're wonderful products. We sell a bunch of them because a lot of players don't have them. We put them into sets. But we said, you know what? That's not the best way to fit the highest lofted fairway wood gap to the, your most comfortable long iron. Because we can fit that 40-yard gap with a product called Gapper. That's where the name came from. Different players have different profiles. They have different trajectory uh, needs within their business, within their way they play. So, for example, Tiger Woods and Dustin Johnson play a Gapper low because they have high ball speeds and they launch it real high. However, an average golfer that may have slower ball speeds who needs help getting the ball up in the air might play a Gapper mid or a Gapper high to elevate or get higher launch conditions in the ball. So we decided there isn't one solution to fit your gap. There's three. There's a low version, a mid version, and a high version. And the lengths of the shaft actually vary by loft, so we can fit every golfer, regardless of skill level, right into the playing long iron and their highest lofted fairway wood. So you no longer have to get stuck in between 180 or 220 yards. We've got a product that fits right in there. And I know a lot of your listeners, I hope, are probably saying, that's exactly my problem is I have a tough time hitting a four iron or a three iron. My rescue club really doesn't give me a whole lot of versatility, and I like playing a five wood. Well, we have a solution for that now. When we launch Gapper this fall, and it is red hot. It is such a cool golf club. It performs so well, and by many accounts, third-party accounts, it's the best performing what we call utility or hybrid club in its category right now, and it's, it's beautiful. So it's an exciting product for us. 
David, as we talked uh, a little bit ago, you know, last month you guys announced that the brand uh, has elected not to attend the January PGA Merchandise Show. Talk about your decision to skip it this year. Yeah, Chris, it, it, candidly, it's a tough decision. Um, there's no, there's no real brand in our business that takes care of our our customers, whether they're retail partners uh, or golf professionals. The way we do. In fact, if you look at the primary tenets of our company, it's about our customers first and golfers first, and that's who we serve. Um, so we really took a hard look, and we do this every year, at the expenses incurred in certain areas of our business. And the PGA Show is one of those big line items that is a fairly expensive uh, investment to go serve our customers. And believe me, uh, we spend more on serving our customers than most do. However, we thought about taking that investment and going directly to our customers outside of a two-day forum where brands come together and show their new products and invest it directly with them, as well as invest in new initiatives to grow the game. Because one of the things that we're trying to do as a company is not just build great products, equipment, and golf balls, and we have some of the best in the business, but importantly, help the game improve, help the game grow. And so we made a tough decision that, you know, for the 48-hour window, uh, that is really the PGA show, we're going to reallocate those expenses directly into growth initiatives in the game and directly to our customers to help them not only fit products but to serve their members, serve their guests, and serve golfers better than they can today through education, through fitting, through value-added opportunities in front of the golfer. And we thought that that was a better way to invest in the business than what we what we currently were doing with the PGA show. So um, it's right for TaylorMade. I'm not suggesting it's right for others. Um, and we still are very fond of the show. It just didn't fit into our plans in 2019. And David, to that end, when you look at the way the market is today, right? I mean, the innovations that we've got out there, right? You've got all the different social media outlets on top of traditional radio and TV and magazines. I mean, there's satellite radio, there's podcasts, there's all kinds of new ways to reach your prospective customers. Is the PGA Merchandise Show still something that's necessary to make a big splash for whatever the new innovations are going to become year to year? Well, you know, you just reeled off, Chris, a series of communication mediums or vehicles that brands like TaylorMade use to launch their product and, and create energy and excitement about their new technologies. The PGA Show is just one of many vehicles that we would use historically to do that. Um, however, when you really think about, you know, the 48-hour window, uh, in which the show exists each January against the other opportunities to promote your messages and do that in a more direct way that provides better benefits to the golfer. We looked at that and said, you know, it just doesn't fit into our media plan this year. And, you know, I think social is such a huge part of everybody's business right now. And those audiences are golfers that really want to hear what's new from TaylorMade. And make no mistake, the PGA show, it's a trade show. So most of your listeners that are golfers, they don't get to attend the PGA show. It's a trade show. And we invest in direct selling and direct marketing partnerships with our trade partners. And most of the work with our trade partners is done well in advance of the show because by the time we get to the show, we're launching those products to golfers around the world. And so for all those reasons, it just it's not part of our plan today. Perhaps there's a new format or a new way to approach the trade show in the future that might be as exciting. We actually work very closely with the PGA of America and really work with them on our decision to uh, to exit the show in 2019 as it relates to why, to help them think about new ways to create greater value, not only in front of retailers that come to the show, golf professionals, assistant golf professionals, but ultimately for golfers. You know, if there was a consumer element of that show that enabled your listeners to go and experience brands like ours, how cool would that be? So there's a lot of different ideas that we're thinking about. We are very close with Seth Waugh, who's the CEO of the PGA of America and the PGA of America. We support them unconditionally, and we will continue to. This just didn't fall into the, the macro metric or macro matrix of promotional activity for us in 2019. David, just a couple more before we let you go. And you know what a fan I am of the TaylorMade golf balls, TP5, TP5X. You've got some new versions of them. I also love the Project A golf ball. It fits my game very well. Talk about what's going on or what's coming up in the golf ball segment. Well, Chris, I, I appreciate you bringing that up. You know, we're very proud of all the products we launch. But when I think about the transformation of our company and the strength of TaylorMade right now, uh, one of the categories that comes to mind immediately is our golf ball. 
And we made a commitment several years ago, not only to get into this golf ball business, but if we're going to get into the golf ball business under typical tailor-made standards, we're going to make the best performing golf ball in the world. And quite candidly, a five-piece construction cast urethane golf ball that's now used by five of the top ten players in the world. And the reason why Rory McIlroy, John Rahm, Jason Day, Justin Rose really are with TaylorMade, Dustin Johnson, is because they knew we had great metal and iron technology. They wanted to play the golf ball. And they're not the only ones. We're going to make some announcements in January about players that are coming to our brand because of the golf ball. And, and believe me, I know it sounds like marketing speak when someone says, hey, more layers is better performance. More layers in golf ball, when done correctly, the way we're doing it, is better performance. We have constructed a ball, two of them, TP5 and TP5X, that enable golfers to maximize distance off the tee and off their irons with higher launch and better spin conditions and not compromise any feel around the greens and chipping and putting. It is simply extraordinary. And, you know, to our entire team, our R&D team that works on golf ball, our product marketers that work on golf ball, we have cracked the code that others haven't been able to do. And believe me, there's a lot of good golf balls in market. But when you go test the golf ball, put it on a launch monitor, I can promise you and your listeners, there is no golf ball that compares to TP5 and TP5X. And you can tell by my emotion intensity about this because if there was a better golf ball than ours, I would tell you there was. But we have now set the standard for golf ball performance, and even the industry leaders are measuring their balls against our performance now, which is which is very humbling for us. And David, here we are on the heels of Veterans Day, and uh, in, here on the, the Armed Forces Radio Network. And TaylorMade offers a military discount for veterans, active military personnel, their spouses, and family members. Want to give you an opportunity to talk about that. Yeah, you know, our veterans mean the world to us. Our servicemen and women, as I mentioned earlier, they mean the world to us. Uh, we're involved in uh, a lot of initiatives that support um, disabled veterans, those that have come back from wars um, that are recovering through the game of golf, um, certainly our support of, of men and women that are currently in the service. And it's very near and dear to me personally and certainly to our company. My father is a veteran of the Korean War and couldn't be more proud of him. And, and um, you know, the sacrifices that, uh, our veterans have made for our country and our current servicemen and women make for our country. It's the ultimate sacrifice. So we uh, we have a discount program uh, that's offered through TaylorMadeGolf.com for veterans uh, so they can get into the game of golf and get into the great TaylorMade equipment and golf balls at a discount. Um, just go onto the website and, and look it up and you'll find it. Our customer service teams are there to service our veterans, and we're just so thankful for them and, and anything we can do. Uh, to support uh, their desire to play the game of golf and play TaylorMade, we're here for you. David, let our listeners know, you mentioned the website. How can they stay up to date with all the great things you guys are doing and continue to follow you, whether it's online or it's on social media? Yeah, you're great. Uh, obviously, TaylorMadeGolf.com is our web address, so uh, www.TaylorMadeGolf.com, or you can follow our Twitter handle, uh, TaylorMadeGolf, our Facebook pages, our Instagram pages, all those are there for you. We've got millions and millions of followers. Uh, we share content around new products. We share content around our athletes. But most importantly, we're so authentic. We talk about golf. We're a golf company. We don't do anything else but golf. And uh, I think that's one of the great strengths of our organization and, and our support of those that really want to improve their play. And, and we're here for you. want to help you get better. David, can't thank you enough for taking time out of your night to come back and be a part of the show. We always learn something when you're here and always enjoy getting to spend some time with you. Like you, like you talked about earlier, hope we get the opportunity to catch up again in January because it sounds like you got a lot of exciting things about to come out. Likewise, Chris. Look forward to it. Thanks for all you do for the game of golf, and I love your show. And, again, happy Thanksgiving to all your listeners, to yourself, and to your families. Same to you, David. Thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. We'll catch up soon. Sounds great. Bye-bye. See you, David. That is David Abelese. He is the CEO of TaylorMade Golf. And, uh, boy, folks, you know, again, we're on the heels of an incredible year for the TaylorMade brand. And to think they've got some new exciting technologies that are about to roll out in January, players coming to their brand to start playing their golf balls. Again, TP5, TP5X, great golf balls. Project A as well as a golf ball that I enjoy very much. So uh, looking forward to having David back on the show, hopefully in January, to talk about all those great things. All right, before I get to my next guest, Kevin Roman, I want to give a shout-out to a few of our sponsors. First, 
to our friends at Super Speed Golf, now used by over half of the tour players around the world. Super Speed Golf is the fastest, most effective way to increase swings. Three eight-minute training sessions per week are all you need to see a 5% increase in your swing speed. With sets for golfers of all ages and over one year of included video instruction as well, Super Speed offers a complete solution to help, help you start bombing it off the tee. Visit them online at superspeedgolf.com to pick up your set today. Also want to put a shout out to our friends at the Ben Hogan Golf Equipment Company. And folks, if you haven't hit Ben Hogan iron since the 80s or the 90s, do yourself a favor. Get a demo iron of either their Fort Worth PTX or new edge irons. Go out on the range and compare it to whatever you've got. All Ben Hogan irons and wedges are handcrafted one at a time in their Fort Worth, Texas factory. No mass production, no shortcuts. Now you can order custom-made irons, wedges, and hybrids online by going to BenHoganGolf.com. And they're going to build those clubs to your specifications. And best of all, charge you a fraction of the typical retail price. Check out their complete line of products at BenHoganGolf.com, where they're, they're going to have an awesome Black Friday and Cyber Monday special out there very soon. So check them out online again at BenHoganGolf.com. And folks, this segment of the show is sponsored by our friends at the PGA Tour Superstore. This segment of the show is brought to you by the PGA Tour Superstore. See why golfers everywhere are proud to call PGA Tour Superstore their golf pro shop. Visit them online at PGATourSuperstore.com. Now back to Chris and more of the show. And now joining me here on the French Lick Resort guest line is Kevin Roman. Let me give you some background on Kevin. He is from New Hartford, New York. He was a golf pro here in town in Atlanta at Cherokee Town and Country Club for several years. And Cherokee is one of the most prestigious para clubs, not only in the city of Atlanta, but around the country, membership by invitation only. He's now the director of instruction at Monterey Peninsula Country Club out in Pebble Beach, California. Besides being one of the top instructors in the country, Kevin has, has been a great player. He played in a couple of majors, including the 1993 U.S. Open at Baltus Roll and the 2009 PGA Championship at Hazeltine. He tied for 16th in the 2009 PGA Professional National Championship, advancing to the PGA Championship after a two-hole playoff. He was a medalist in the 2000, or medalist in that 2009 U.S. Open qualifier. And while he was here in Georgia, he was named the PGA Teacher of the Year back in 2014. And I am honored he is with me tonight here on Next on the Tee. Hey, Kevin, thanks for being a part of the show. Thanks for having me on, Chris. Uh, real honor to be associated with you and your show. So, Kevin, I want to start by going back to your experiences playing in the two majors I mentioned in your intro, the 93 U.S. Open at Baltus Roll, which was won by Lee Jansen. But there were so many great legends of the game in that field, including Jack Nicklaus, you know, who had won a couple of times at Baltus Roll, made the cut at age 53. But you had guys like Seve and Greg Norman, Tom Watson, Tom Kite, Raymond Floyd, Payne Stewart. I could go on and on as a part of that field. Talk about how you qualified for that event and what it was like playing in it. Yeah, that was, uh, I was very fortunate that year. Um, we had our sectional qualifier up in, uh, the Long Island area, New York metropolitan area. And basically when I finished the second round, I was told I was going to get in the tournament. But when I went to the other site, I was on the opposite site. It, I found out I was in a 13 man playoff for like six spots and you know we have lots of tour players so it was a lot of fun uh in my group was bob tway and uh unfortunately or fortunately for me unfortunately for for him i'm not sure if he got in i made like a 50 foot birdie putt to, to qualify so i was out on the first hole and everybody else had to come back the next day so it was a pretty exciting moment for me at that time of my career and Kevin, you and another Georgia PGA professional, Tim Weinhardt, who was the club pro at uh, St. Marlowe Golf Club up in Duluth, Georgia at the mm -hmm. time, you you both made the field for the 2009 PGA Championship, and that was the year Y.E. Yang out to Tiger for the win. But talk about your memories being a part of that event. Well, it was interesting because I don't remember a lot. I got worn out practicing, you know, first event on tour at the 93 U.S. Open, so I took the time to say I was going to enjoy this. And, you know, I was fortunate to play with Tim uh, in the last round of Nationals, and he had a chance to to win. We were on the 14th hole, and I needed to make a birdie to kind of get back into it. And uh, he actually made a couple mistakes down the end, which was sad to see. But um, at the tournament, I took a lot of time to enjoy the moment. 
not didn't have any expectations. Just wanted to have a good time with family and friends. A lot of them came from Cherokee and Georgia. So we just had a, a good time. We rented a house and we had dinner every night with everyone. Um, but the tournament wise, you know, I was fortunate. I played a practice round with Rory McIlroy, Louis Eustazen. I was also paired with Matt Kuchar and Louis Eustazen in the tournament. And I've been fortunate to spend a lot of time with, uh, Matt Kuchar's coach, Chris O'Connell, and with Matt at a lot of tour sites. So the small world that's kind of come full circle, uh, at that tournament was pretty cool. And Kevin, as I was looking over your scorecard from the event, you eagled the par five seventh hole in the second round. And that's a hole that's got a pond up there on the left, a very tricky hole. And, and you go and you eagle. It had to be a huge thrill to make eagle there. Yeah, it was fun. You know, I just, I hit it to the, just, I remember that one to the right side of the green and I had a chip across the green and, you know, fortunate went in. It was pretty cool that one of our members at the time, Marcus Fallen at that time, and actually had a videotape and he put it on YouTube. Not that you could see a lot, but it was funny to see him, the reaction of our members. Kevin, I read that prior to your second round that someone actually spilled a Bloody Mary all over you and you had to go buy new clothes in the pro shop. What happened? Ah, who really knows? I mean, it just there's people all over the place and, you know, a lot of crowd and people have stuff. They just kind of bump into you. You're coming through the ropes and stuff like that. So things happen. I mean, you just kind of go with the flow and go play. It's a lot of fun. So, Kevin, you know, kind of going all the way back to the beginning and looking at, you know, your, you know, tra- how you traverse the country. You go from New Hartford, New York, to coming down here <laughs> to the Atlanta area, and now all the way out in Pebble Beach. So you've really covered the country. Talk about your sort of how you've, you know, you know circumvented the whole country and uh, taking your golf career from New York to Atlanta to out to L.A. area. Yeah, I mean, that's. It, even to this day, I'm still kind of amazed that it's kind of happened this way. I was fortunate, you know, that our old boss at Cherokee wanted people who were decent players at the time. And when my stepdaughter went off to school, uh, the job came available at Cherokee, and I was fortunate to get it. And I was an assistant pro at the time, and I was doing very well teaching, and I was kind of pushed into the teaching realm, which has been a great godsend for me. And I just grew as an instructor. My passion really came out for trying to help people play golf. And my boss saw that, which was a great blessing. And then, you know, things happened for a reason. I truly believe this after finding out about the opening at Monterey two days before the deadline and somehow getting the opportunity to work what I consider the greatest 36 holes in America. I mean, you get to go play on the ocean every day and, we have a driving range right on the ocean. It's just a special place. Yeah, talk about the Monterey Peninsula Country Club and the courses and the facilities you guys have out there. Yeah, 36 holes. Both courses are ranked in the top 100. Uh, the Dunes course, which is newly renovated like a year and a half ago, has been received as a number one redo uh, with Golf Digest, I believe, last year. And... I love asking guest members, other tour players, which ones they prefer when they come here. And you really get a 50-50 split. Uh, The Dunes is a lot more of a a lot more difficult course. Uh, Greens are a lot uh, more undulated, Fazio design. Uh, Jackson Kahn helped out with that also. And the shore is a little more traditional and flat, more plainer greens, which kind of just have a consistent break across them. Uh, But both of them are world-class, and visually stunning. And Kevin, I also read that the tougher the playing conditions, the more you like it because it makes you focus harder. Talk about, you know, yeah. how you're able to ignore the winds, ignore the, you know, whether you're in the desert or where, wherever you happen to be playing around the golf, why you like the tougher player conditions. Yeah, that's that's a great uh, question, and I, and I truly believe that. Uh, you know, you go back to Tom Watson used to say he liked playing in poor conditions because half the field would give up. And and that's true. You see so many people complaining about wind, rain, hot, cold, whatever it is. And I truly embrace the challenge. It also makes me um, think about what I'm doing more where you just don't get up and hit the shot right away. 
you actually think about strategy a little bit more, think about how to, to do it. When I made the PGA in 09, in our section qualifier that fall, it was cold. The first day was probably in the, the low to mid 40s, and I think I shot like 76. And I was like in 80th place. The next day, uh, it didn't get above 35. The wind probably blew at least 20 to 25 minimum. And I was fortunate to shoot 68, and I went ended up third. Uh, so I made a big get, leap just because of the weather. And I've always just, coming from upstate New York, you learn to play in all kinds of conditions. So I think it eliminates some of the field, and it allows you to make up a lot of ground. And Kevin, I heard that you, if you had one course to play every day, you would pick TPC Sawgrass in Jacksonville. Talk about why that is. Um you know, that's the course where I think you use every club in your bag. Uh, the conditions, I've only had the fortunate to play it uh, one time. Um, but the conditions change all the time with the wind different directions. Uh, you got very difficult lives if you miss hit shots. And I just enjoy challenge of playing the game. I mean, I'm not one who's worried about posting a good score all the time. I just like to be challenged to see how good I can become or if I can pull off certain shots that are there. And that course, really, as you can tell by the winners of the tournament there, it's not uh, beneficial to any one type of player. Anybody can win there because you got to control and hit all the shots in golf. Kevin, I want to switch it up and, and talk a little bit about instruction. And, and um, I wanted to get your thoughts. If, if a new student comes to you, and says, you know what, Kevin, I really want to get better, and I really want to improve my game, whether it's a, a junior golfer who's coming to you because they want to play high school level or AJGA or, or get on into college golf, or it's just a recreational golfer like me who says, you know what, I want to break 80. How do you jointly go about helping that particular golfer achieve that goal? Yeah, that's a great question because I look at lessons are, are either constructive uh, meaning you're trying to construct someone's game from the ground up or just corrective, meaning they're kind of off the rails today for, you know, instead of being an 18 handicap, they're playing to a 23. They just want to get back to their 18. So I think we have to be as instructors um, aware of what the student really wants out of the game. I've been fortunate. I was actually talking to a couple of uh, kids today or played with one yesterday that's going to be going to play a firm and next year. I've been fortunate to have nine kids recently, uh, currently in playing Division One golf. And I just think getting people to enjoy getting better and understanding where their weaknesses are and how to practice is key. Um, I do a lot of games or skill challenges um, with all the kids to get them to do that. And building a golf IQ, meaning if you put a ball in the rough, how do you get out with the best avenue strategy? is really important. I don't think enough people are taught the nuances of playing the game versus trying to make a perfect looking golf swing. So I really work on just trying to, how do I maximize the player's skill to get the ball in the hole than trying to build a beautiful looking golf swing? You know, my mentor, uh, Jim Hardy, always talks about the secret to golf is just a correct repetitive swing. How you do it doesn't matter. And I truly believe in that, and just getting people to hit the ball better gets them to come back and play and practice more, which just kind of builds upon itself. And, Kevin, I want to build upon what you just said a moment ago because I think it, it is something that is missed a lot of times, and, and that is how to you know, taught how to actually play the game from a strategy perspective, not a swing perspective, not a technical perspective, mm -hmm. but the strategy and playing the game and thinking your way around a golf course. Talk about how you ingrain that in your players. You know, one of the things that recently, in the last couple of years, I was influenced by a uh, stop by set a decade, and I personally use that system um, as I've played, and I've had a really good year this year playing. Last year I didn't play much because of moving to the West Coast, so I only played like one tournament. Um, basically getting people on the course, and I'll ask them what they're trying to do, and then I'll explain what I would do and why. And – you know, it's a lot, it's really eye opening that most people, when they come to the golf course, have no idea where to aim, that they're always aiming from point A to point B, but not realizing just playing different angles gives you a bigger margin of error 
that you can make swing mistakes and yet still score well. Most people try to play the perfect shot all the time and end up costing themselves a lot of shots. Kevin, uh, one more thing before we let you go, but uh, wanted to get your thoughts on, I, I know you're a proponent of uh, you know playing truth golf. Talk about what that mm -hmm. is. Yeah, playing truth golf is uh, Jim Hardy and Chris O'Connell, which have been obviously the most instrumental in my career. I've seen a lot of teachers and heard a lot of speeches. And the first 15 minutes at the a teaching or certified teaching seminar that they give was eye-opening in the sense that Anybody can fix anybody's swing immediately just by changing if they're too shallow, adding a little steepening element or vice versa to their swing so you can get immediate results in the player and make them better. The old, you got to get worse before you get better, we don't believe in, or Jim doesn't, he's meant to, he needs to put that into us in our system. Um, we've got instructors literally all over the world, and we're into the motto that hit the next shot better. Doesn't mean it's a perfect shot, but it's a lot better. Um, there's a big misconception out there that Jim will talk about when Chris one and two playing swings, but that's just kind of in our minds, kind of a swing category that people look in. But when it comes to fixing someone and getting them to hit it better, it's all about they're either too steep or they're usually too shallow and just kind of go the opposite direction and they're going to hit it better right away. Kevin, let our listeners know, how can they follow you and stay up to date with the things you're doing, whether it's online or it's on social media? Yeah, uh, on Twitter, I use Kevin Roman Golf. Um, I just go by Kevin Roman on Facebook, and I'm out at uh, Monterey Peninsula Country Club. So if anybody gets out there, you know, we'd appreciate a phone call. I'd like to say hi and, and meet y'all. That'd be great. Well, Kevin, thank you very much for taking time out of your evening to come and be a part of the show. I, I hope you'll come back and join me again sometime. Love to keep track of what you're doing and have you come back and share more of your playing lessons and your insights. It's been great having you here tonight. Oh, it's been an honor. And, you know, anytime you want, I'm happy to join you. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, Kevin. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Look forward to catching up with you again soon. You too. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody else also. Thanks, Kevin. That is Kevin Roman. Again, uh, um, he's out at Monterey Peninsula Country Club out in Pebble Beach, California, and is uh, one of the great instructors out there. So if you're out in that part of the country, please go see Kevin. Give him a follow online and on Twitter. Uh, it's uh, It was great having him here. Hopefully we get the opportunity to catch up with him again uh, sometime around the beginning of the year. But uh, really enjoyed having Kevin as part of the show tonight. All right, folks, before we close up shop, we want to uh, remind you about our good friend Jim Estes and the great work that he and his team do over at the Salute Military Golf Association. Let's hear a word from Jim about all the things that they're doing. The Salute Military Golf Association was created to provide rehabilitative golf experiences to the brave men and women who have been wounded while serving our country. Hi, I'm Jim Estes, PGA Golf Pro and co-founder of the Salute Military Golf Association. With my adaptive golf program, we've successfully helped thousands of soldiers in their recovery, both mentally and physically. The SMGA has been providing family-inclusive golf experiences across the country since 2007. To date, the SMGA has equipped more than 1,000 warriors with properly fitted golf clubs and has extended its clinic series to more than eight chapter and affiliate locations across the U.S. If you are a wounded veteran interested in participating or if you'd like to learn more about the Salute Military Golf Association and find a chapter closest to you, visit our website at smga.org. We've seen firsthand how impactful golf can be in aiding one's recovery. The Salute Military Golf Association, empowering wounded veterans one fairway at a time. Visit smga.org. That's smga.org. Yeah, folks, go online to, and check out the Salute Military Golf Association. They continue to do such wonderful things for our military veterans. Again, you can find them online at smga.org. All right, folks, time for me to put a bow on this episode of Next on the Tee. My sincere thanks go out to David Abelese and Kevin Roman for joining me tonight. Folks, please give me your thoughts. Check out our page on Facebook, Next on the Tee with Chris Mascari. Give me a comment. Give us a like. That's very important to us, too. Please check out our website, nextonthetee.net. On there, you're going to be able to link back to 
all of our archive episodes uh, over on our page on Podbean. Can't thank those folks enough for featuring us every day and on their mobile app and their golf section. So very big thanks to them this year. Uh, and on our website, you're going to be able to see who some of our future guests are going to be. You'll be able to see what our guest schedule looks like. And again, Go right back to hearing any of our archive episodes from right right from there. Please also check out our sister show on the football side, Thursday Night Tailgate, with me and my co-host Bob Lazari and our announcer Joe Lajanusha. That show airs live every Thursday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern time. You can stream it live right here on Blog Talk Radio. And again, that show like this one also available as a free podcast over on Podbean and iHeartRadio as well. On Thursday Night Tailgate, we're joined every week by five NFL legends who come on and share their stories from their playing days, plus give us insights into what's going on around the league now. Plus, we also highlight two players doing great things in their communities and our spotlight on the positive segment. You can find that show online at ThursdayNightTailgate.com and this show at NextOnTheT.net. Folks, again, thank you for choosing to listen to the show tonight. We really appreciate it. Until next week, hit them straight, my friends. instructors and media members go to tell their stories join us the same time every tuesday to hear more stories about the game we love from people who love sharing those stories with you it's all about the great game of golf it's all about